Hey friends, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be a career Q&A as a security analyst. Okay, so I'm just going to jump right into it, but just as a little bit of background, I'm currently working as a security analyst. I've been working for about three years out of college and I graduated with my bachelor's degree in information science and technology. And that's kind of the gist of my background. All right, so first question on this list is, how did I get my first job in cybersecurity? So I actually still get this question a lot in my comments, but I have made a video on how I actually did get my first job in cybersecurity which I can link down below if you guys haven't seen it but essentially when I was graduating college I was mostly applying for software engineering roles it just so happened that I went to a conference slash career fair and that was the Grace Hopper conference where I was able to meet my previous employer which was my first ever introduction into anything cybersecurity related and they just happened to be hiring for a cybersecurity rotational program I just thought it was a little bit more interesting than the software engineering roles that I had offers for and that was kind of how I made up my mind because I figured I could always go back into software engineering which is what my background is primarily in before I came into cybersecurity. So that is at a high level how I got into cybersecurity. It was really just by happenstance and being in the right place at the right time. But that is also another reason why I think it's so important to expand your touch points and your surface area for potential opportunities like that where it might just be a career fair or meeting a new person or a recruiter or someone who might be able to refer you for a specific company or a specific role. Those are all the touch points that you want to have a lot of when you're applying for jobs especially out of college out of a boot camp or if you're someone who is trying to switch careers and you're already working next question is another one that i get very often in my comments and that is how much do i make as a security analyst so i've actually made a video on this as well and in my previous role i was making $115,000 out of college as a security analyst in a cybersecurity rotation program and i know that is a lot of money especially with just my bachelor's degree so i'll link that video below if you guys want to kind of learn more about that and this also happens to be the same job i was referring to in the first question about how I got my first cybersecurity job. So hopefully that video can be helpful to you guys who might be more interested in the details of that. And one more addition is the fact that that role was in person or that salary was meant to be an in-person role for Jersey City slash New York. And in my current role, I'm making somewhat equivalent to that, but in a remote role. So I definitely think that location relevant to your salary was a lot more relevant when it came to in-person jobs before the pandemic. But obviously nowadays with so many companies going remote, staying remote and some of them going hybrid, there's definitely a more flexibility in terms of your salary even if you're not in a high cost of living city like new york san fran all the expensive cities in the u.s and around the world third question is and by the way i'm reading questions off of my phone so if you see me looking down that is why but the third question is do i plan on working in cybersecurity forever so this is something that i've definitely gone back and forth with in my mind i've talked to friends i've talked to luca i've talked to uh even youtubers i've talked to josh specifically and just thinking about potential ways i could bring my career whether it's continuing down cybersecurity or if it's going back to software engineering Engineering, or if it's you know trying out a whole different field and honestly all these things are things I have considered in the back of my mind when I first got into college I was a nursing major and then I switched into computer science and then I made another switch into information science and technology and for majority of college when I was an IST major I wanted to go into data science even though my major had very very little math and I probably wouldn't have made it in that field unless I went for a master's or a PhD and I wasn't really planning on it at least not currently where I am in my career but I still think that data science side of things is so very interesting especially if you're someone who's going into ai or machine learning those are very much the buzzwords that are going to be you know a thing for the next five or ten years and while i think that's very exciting i don't know if i i don't know if that's something i want to devote myself to because i know you have to be very very much in that space if you're going to get into ai or machine learning so as someone like me who's interested in very many different areas and things i don't know if just going into data science would be the best choice for me but i also don't know if i want to forever stay in cybersecurity for my entire career and sorry the lighting is changing the sun is coming out because it just stormed let me try to move you guys basically short answer to that question i don't think i plan on staying in cybersecurity for my entire span the entire span of my career i might go back to software engineering for a bit maybe i'll then also come back to cybersecurity and do some other things but yeah i'm kind of all over the place now so i'll keep you guys updated so be sure to subscribe and turn on post notifications if you want to if you guys want to stay up to date with each other on career updates and things like that and next question is how often am i stressed at work so i really think the stress when it comes to my job it really ebbs and flows when it comes to where we are in the quarter what projects are coming up what deadlines are coming up if there is a reorg or changes in the team if people are leaving the team if new people are coming on if there's a whole bunch of emergencies and fire drills in one week 
or in a one month time span a lot of these things can affect how stressed i am at work and yeah it's kind of a bad answer but i do think that it depends on the time of year it is and the time was a quarter but that of course also depends on your team for example in my previous company my work was really not revolved around quarter end or project deadlines as much as my current role is but in my last company i did have a bunch of rolling deadlines so basically basically that means every week or so i had some kind of deadline for some kind of testing strategy or some kind of cybersecurity documentation that i had to do or even on my previous pen testing team on average i probably did about three pen testing assessments a week those always had deadlines of course because because you started on monday you should have finished by friday and everything should be submitted and peer reviewed and documented perfectly by at least the monday after so it's pretty fast turnaround time, honestly. Um, but again, we were a junior pen testing team. So because of that, we didn't have the most, we weren't as in-depth as the red team or the other more technical, more technical offensive security teams in my company. But basically I was used to always having some kind of very up and impending deadline that was coming near. But in my current role, it really all depends on what's going on. So I don't have as straightforward of the deadlines that are like, you start pen testing on Monday and then you finish on Friday. I don't have any kind of structure like that in my current team. And believe it or not, it was actually very nice to have that structure because then i know exactly what i had coming up and even looking forward on that team i always knew what pen tests i had how many i was going to have in each week and that also told me how busy i was going to be the busy times i'll maybe have five or six in one week those are very busy weeks and then on slower weeks i'll have one or two and even though it also changed based on the week i also knew exactly how many i had probably a month in advance a lot easier to predict how stressed you were going to be and it kind of get you mentally prepared for it so i would say maybe 20 to 25% of the time at work I'm stressed. Most of the time I'm not too stressed. I would say I'm about average. Do you ever have to work long hours or weekends? So somehow, I don't know if it's because I've been really lucky or just because something else, but I've never had any on-call hours. Even working in the past three years in cybersecurity, I don't know if it's my teams or the structure of the organizations that I've been in, but I have been lucky enough to have not had any on-call hours that I know of at least. So the weirdest hours I would have ever worked would just be for, would just be for getting through the busy period of my work day for example if i have a very busy week then maybe i will be working until seven or eight o'clock at night but typically i won't be doing that i typically just work nine to five and i normally don't work on weekends maybe there was two or three times in my entire career that i have remembered working on a sunday night to get a head start on the week and i think that's pretty good for cybersecurity for tech um, i know people who work 50 60 70 hour weeks depending on where you're working the size of your company the size of your team just how busy you are honestly i've just been really lucky i guess to not have had those very very stressful times be those people who are always working on weekends have weekend on calls working holidays i've just been lucky enough not to have that let me know in the comments below if you guys are someone who has that on call and would love to hear your experiences with that and how that's been like uh because i know in a previous company even with on-call teams a lot of them weren't were also not the best work environments so i guess it's really like the saying when it rains it pours but again that's just what i've seen so i'm sure other people would have different experiences as well how do you know when you should make a career change so this is definitely a very timely question as I have previously switched jobs in the past four months or so Honestly, it's kind of crazy how fast time flies It feels like i've just started in this job, but it also feels like i've been here for a long time Yeah, I, I definitely do not regret switching my role and i've learned so much in my current role and from my manager from my teammates I really do think that I just fit in so much better with my current company's company culture compared to my previous one Which which was a financial institution and currently i'm working at a much smaller company I guess it's considered smaller to midsize and the company's only been around for about 10 years or so so definitely you know much shorter than a big bank but i really think that the team culture just resonates a lot more with me so when it comes to knowing when to make a career change if you're someone who is asking yourself that question then it probably means that you should make a career change um, it typically is when you feel stagnant in your career or you don't feel like you can grow as much whether it's financially professionally in any way that pertains to your personal or technical development and i don't think there's any shame in talking about outgrowing a role that you've been in and it doesn't mean that you have to leave the company that you're currently working with a lot of times you can do internal transfers and they can be just as good and just as big of a fresh start as moving to a completely new company so if you're someone who's already having these thoughts in mind and you have a supportive manager to be able to talk to them about this or a mentor in your company then i would definitely consult them and see what they think and kind of what your options are i do think internal transfers are a very good way to go because because you're already in the same company and and it's likely going to be a lot less stress in terms of interviewing because because you don't have to go far when it comes to looking for the actual roles that you want to apply to and for a lot of people it typically goes back to where you are 
in your life for example if you're someone who is in your mid 20s or late 20s and you don't have kids yet you don't have a mortgage and and maybe there's always been something that you wanted to do for example working at a specific company or a specific sector or going into the startup world or doing your own thing and following your passion projects i'm sure a lot of people are doing things like that nowadays especially post pandemic uh, a lot of people are kind of realizing that time is very limited and i completely agree with that and you should be doing something that makes you excited to get up and go to work even if it's not traditional work so if you ever have that feeling where you don't want to get out of bed because you don't want to look forward to the day that i think is one of the biggest signs that you should probably make a change somehow in your life it doesn't have to be a job it could also be something else maybe it's a change of scenery or getting new hobbies or seeing your friends more or just getting outside into nature so definitely make sure that it's right for you when you're thinking about making a career switch but i also think that you'll know in your gut when it's time to leave if you have to pick one a good project or good teammates so as someone who's worked in four different teams in the last three years i have seen kind of the gambit of the different teams different managing styles the different just cultures that you'll have in different companies and the and sub teams that exist one of my number one priorities uh having good teammates and having a good manager that is always going to override having a good project for me at least i know there's other people who specifically look for projects that are high that are high impact and high visibility and those are probably the ones that are going to get you promoted and and you know get recognition across your organization and stuff like that and while i think that's very good and i've definitely had opportunities to work on more high visibility things i've always found that i am the least stressed and the happiest when i'm working on a team where i'm able to work well with my teammates enjoy working in my team and also enjoy working with my manager and feeling supported by my manager and that's something that i value even more than a good project and visibility because i've seen what it can do to my mental health and just overall work life happiness of you know my day to day i could love the work that i'm doing and love my project but if i'm having to deal with a toxic work environment or toxic teammates or or an unsupportive manager then you know it kind of already negates the fact that i have a great project because i'm not going to be thinking about the project i want to be thinking about bureaucracy and working with people and dealing with the drama that comes with workplace drama so for me personally i would always choose good teammates good people versus a good project even though i do believe good projects are important as well so maybe just finding the best balance for you depending on what you value most is going to be something that you kind of have to define for yourself where do you see yourself in 10 years okay so this one is pretty similar to one of the beginning questions about whether or not i see myself in cybersecurity forever and honestly i'm someone who values my work flexibility so if i had the choice to i would definitely try to work some kind of contractor or less hours if i could work 20 to 30 hours a week in my day job that would probably be my preferred split of hours for example right now most people work a full-time job and it's typically 40 hours a week and 40 hours a week is very arbitrary it's just a number of hours that was set back in the 1900s and people kind of stuck along with it and for me as someone who has a bunch of other things outside of my full-time job that i also work on for example this youtube channel which is a huge amount of time commitment outside of my day job i would definitely want a better split of time between my personal things and my work thing and hopefully at some point in the future i can work either as a contractor part-time or some kind of flexible working hours even freelancing i don't really mind or consulting if i'm able to be a consultant for, for small businesses in terms of cybersecurity strategy and stuff like that that honestly was my dream when i got into cybersecurity if i was if i were able to do something like that down the line i would definitely love that so it really is just up in the air right now what do you think about cybersecurity and web3 so this is something that i actually am planning a video on soon um, let me know in the comments below if you guys want to see that video because i am kind of debating what i should be putting in there if you guys have any specific questions about web3 and cybersecurity let me know but i've seen a lot of talk about web3 and blockchain and just and just the differences that it's going to make in terms of cybersecurity and the jobs that are going to be out there for cybersecurity professionals in the future so i definitely think that there's going to be a lot of opportunity with so many people already with so many companies already hiring for roles like blockchain security engineer that is not a role that you probably would have seen seven years ago or five years ago these are new roles that are coming and and honestly because technology is always changing it doesn't matter what technology is coming up web3 is new right now but 20 30 years from now there's going to be some other new technology that's going to blow up and people are still going to be asking things like oh what's this going to mean for the future of work in tech or cybersecurity or any other field that is, that is going to be up and coming in the future it really all comes down to learning as much as you can having a learning and growth mindset to be able to keep up with the trends that are in cybersecurity and in the tech fields that you want to stay in because those are the roles that companies are going to be are going to be hiring for so as long as you're staying up to date on the newest technology trends everything that's in cybersecurity the latest vulnerabilities if they're more so related to web3 i'm sure there's going to be a lot more news on web3 in the future as we kind of see unravel and see more of the world and seeing more companies and the world 
world adapting to these newer blockchain technologies so my only thought about that is just continuous learning and keeping up with job cycles all right so that's it for this video let me know if you guys have any questions in the comments below if you liked it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and turn on post notifications i post videos every wednesdays and sundays at 12 p.m and hopefully i'll see you guys in my next video bye